Hello and welcome to the channel. In the previous video, we've seen how to connect to a web API in order to get data in Excel using VBA macros. And as an example, we've used the public API that returns the list of universities for a given country. The process is similar to the one we used before to scrape web data in Excel. It consists of sending a HTTP request to the web resource URL. But the response is different here. The API response is JSON data. That's the most common, but some APIs also return XML or even HTML data. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a lightweight data format used a lot with JavaScript, but also other programming languages, and is the most popular data format used with APIs. This down here in the media window is the API response JSON raw data we got in the previous video. If we look closely, we see there are some opening brackets Many info in double quotes, also separated by a comma, etc, etc. Let me show you in the browser now. This is the same API URL we used, and this is the API JSON response. And here in Firefox, you can see the response as raw data or as JSON format. And as you see, there are some elements. Actually, it's all within an array. The square brackets always denote an array. And each university is an object, denoted by the opening and closing curly brackets. Each object contains key and value pairs separated by a comma. So for example, alpha2 code is the key or keyword, and its value is SE for Sweden. The key domain has an array of values. You see here zero, that's the first value in the array. And if we look at the raw data, you see the square brackets. But it has only one element, or one value in the array. The next key is country. And the value is Sweden. It's always Sweden because we have selected that country. So that's the structure. And the last key and value pair is actually what we're interested in. And that's the name of the university. So the key is name. And the value is the name of the university. And as this is the last element, there is no comma. And we get the closing curly bracket. And this repeats for every element. There are different ways to get that info. I'm going to show you a simple way to do it with just a few lines of code. And that can be used with this API and some other APIs as well, just tweaking the code a little. But it won't work with every API. If you want a solid solution that works with every API, there is a VVA JSON converter available on GitHub. And there are plenty of videos showing how to use that. So I'm not going to cover that here. Basically, every video you see on YouTube about Excel APIs is using that converter. But the converter is almost a thousand lines of code and requires to create a dictionary, so it's a bit more complicated. And I didn't feel like doing all of that just to get some simple info, such as the list of universities here. So we are going to have a loop to search for each university in the response string, looking up the key or the term name. So the response comes here from the previous macro, and the term we are going to look up is name. And here's the loop. And we're going to do that using the function in string, starting in position 1 at first, but I will call that search start. And we look in the response string for the term. And that's giving the starting position of the term string, which is name. So we will put that into another variable that I'm going to call find term. So we need to declare all these variables, term as a string, find term as an integer, and the search start as an integer as well. And we're going to set here search start. Initially, it's going to be 1. Now, if find term is greater than zero, so if it finds that term, which is name in our case, then it updates the search start position equals to find term plus one. But else, 
If it does not find it, then we exit the do loop. Then we define the start position and end position within the string where the university name is as start position in string again, starting on search start in response. And now we look for a colon. As we know that the key and the value pairs are separated by a column. Let's have a look again back here. We have the value key name, and then we have a column, and then the name of the university. And of course, we have the same in the raw data. The name, then the column, and then the name of the university. So after the column, plus one, that's going to be the starting position of the name of a university. And similarly, we're going to get the end position as in string, search start in the response. And now we're going to look for the closing curly bracket. As this is the last element in the object and there is no comma. Minus one. If it was another element, we would look for the comma instead. It is important to say at this point again that this just works for some simple APIs, as there might be other commas within the value string, for example. So we would need to account for that. Or the value can be an array of other values, which are separated by a comma, or even an object with new curly brackets, etc. And we would need to account for all of that which makes things more complicated. And that's why the VVA JSON converter available on GitHub that I mentioned earlier has almost a thousand lines of code to account for all those scenarios. The JSON format is very powerful and it can become very complicated with nested objects inside other objects, etc. But in this simple example and in other simple APIs, it's possible to get the info of interest with simple code looping through the response string and using string functions. So now, we can get the term value we're looking for, that is the name of the university, as term val equals the meet function of the response starting in a start position and taking as many characters as end position minus start position plus one. And we're going to remove the double quotes from the string with replace. So term val equals replace of term val comma character 34, which is the character for double quotes. And we replace it with an empty string. Finally, we add term val, so the name of the university, to, for example, range A and the row r value equals term val. So we just need to increment r by one every time and loop again. So that's it. Let's run it and see how it works. But we need to run the first macro and then call this second one here. And there was a typo here. Actually, I, I did it too fast. So let's see if it works now. And here we get the list of universities for Sweden. And if we want to get other info, such as let's have a look at the JSON formatted response. So for example, we want to get the web page. We just need to change the term up here web pages instead of name and the end position would come now from looking for a comma here and not the closing curly bracket and the web page is actually an array of web pages so we would actually have to look for the closing square bracket of the array and then the comma but I noticed 
there is always just one element in this array. So there is always just one web page. And therefore, looking for the comma would probably work. But I think you get the point. In the same way, we had to look at the HTML structure when scraping web data, as shown in a previous video. Here we need to look at the JSON data structure to get to the info with the string functions I show you here. And that's how we read the API JSON response to get the data from a web API in Excel using VBA macros. Thanks for watching.